I started it earlier when I asked, um, can you imagine a world with just Yahweh in it? And you said yes. And mm -hmm. then I asked, uh, is a world without sin better than a world with sin? And I think you said yes. So here's the question. To me, yeah. If, and I think you see the question coming a mile away. If uh, No, I if can't. Not, I'm blind. <laughs> if Yahweh uh, is already in a world, you know, with just himself before he created anything, and this world is without sin, mm -hmm. it's probably the best possible world we can imagine. Mm -hmm. Why downgrade to a world that he knows will contain sin and evil and suffering? Why the downshift, do you think? What's your opinion? I don't know. That's the thing I'll probably ask him whenever I die and go. Yeah, I... I, but I think it's a good question to um, to think about with the problem of evil because... No, I, I agree. I mean, I, I would doubt that at all. But at the same time, I'm not going to lie and say that I know an answer that I obviously don't, knowing God's intentions of why he would just simply um, downgrade um, for that. So you agree then if, there, if God chose not to create, there would be no sin? Right, because if there was a human being and such, like we have Adam and Eve, and then, of course, he established the laws to them, and they violate that law, that's what sin is, then obviously, yeah, then, you know, without do, them, there would be no sin. And do you agree that if God chose yes. not to create, that there'd be nobody in hell? <coughs> Correct. And do you agree that God doesn't want people to go to hell? I think that for some people that he says, you know, this is something he has a prescription towards, but as far as the decretive will, he does uh, decree some people for hell. You think so? You think God does desire some people to go to hell? In the decretive sense, yes. Okay. Um, I just have one last question. And um, by the way, I appreciate your answers. Uh, to me, that's a, a very Calvinist type response, and it's very consistent. But it does mm -hmm. kind of look your, and I think you, part of you at least, will agree that it kind of makes your God look like a schmuck. But anyhow. To some people, we would start. <laughs> yeah. Um, my last question is, is there any claim in the New Testament that you think mm -hmm. is probably false? Well, in terms of a, not necessarily a, a claim, uh, but it does teach on some ideas that the ancients had, and that is in Hebrews where it mentions uh, that a man is in uh, the semen uh, in his father's testicles um, in reference to when saying that, concerning the reference to Melchizedek said, that he met Abraham and that he was in, the, and this person was in the I said New Testament. Testament. Yeah, that's that's New Testament. Oh, I thought you said uh, an Old Testament book. So there Not are Hebrews. Oh, Hebrews. So there are things that the New Testament purports to be true that you think is probably false. Not necessarily that's purporting to be true. That's why I'm trying to state that it's talking okay, about that's what my question like theological is, messaging. That is my question. Is, okay. is there things that okay. you believe that are in the New Testament that purports to be true that is probably false? So, but like Bible teachings then? No, no. I've just what people would view as facts. Do you think that there's, okay. there's something said in the Bible that's that at least sounds like it's just reporting a fact that you think is probably mm -hmm. not a fact? <clears throat> That it's trying to intend to be a fact. Yeah. No. Like I can give you a couple examples, like the zombies coming out of the grave, the temple curtain wouldn't be a zombie. The temple curtain being ripped in two, the sun going off for three hours. You think that although it's written as a, like that's history, you believe that's mm -hmm. all probably true. So what do, you, what do you mean the temple curtain being ripped? The temple at uh, Jesus's uh, death, the temple curtain was ripped asunder in Matthew okay. 27. I think, like, do you believe that probably happened in the past? Most likely then, if that's what it's saying. But I'm not familiar with that particular passage. It's been a while since it's I- a, It's in the Actually, same paragraph as the, as the dead coming out of the graves. It's in the same paragraph as the sun going dark for three hours. Right, which that has some historical accuracy with a few writings that were mentioned. Which does the sun going off for three the, hours? Yeah, I believe it was either uh, Josephus that mentioned it or was, uh, one of the Roman writers. Um, mentioned the sun being off for three hours? You sure? 
Yeah, that mentions there was an eclipse and such, and that's what they refer to it. Eclipses are three minutes in any given place. Right, and they mentioned that it was different than the usual eclipses. A three-hour eclipse. I don't think he specifies the time, but he said that it was definitely a longer one than usual. And they, and a lot of people had different speculations of what could have caused it, depending on which of the different religions they adhered to. There was the Jews that had their thing, and then you had the yeah. pagans that had their other um, interpretation of what that meant. So you corporate. think it's more probable? It's more probable that the sun went off for three hours in some type of super long eclipse than the Bible just being wrong about one thing. Well, I mean, I think based upon if one histor if there is historical records that conform to it, then I would have to say that there's uh, no reason to doubt that the historical records, if we're going to consider at least in the supernatural view, that this one act is as a result of God intervening at that point to do something that's different than what we did naturally with the uh, eclipses and such. Well, I would love to see Josephus talk about a three-hour eclipse. Um, if you find it, let me know. Mm -hmm. Because I remember, I think it was in the one of the things from Inspiring Philosophy, uh, New Testament uh, thing, is where I saw that there was a mentioned, uh, but I can't think of a specific historian that mentions the event at the time. But not all history, even history that is um, has secondary, primary, secondary, even tertiary sources. Right. Some history is wrong, correct? Right. There are some histories that uh, can be wrong and such, and that's why I think we need to uh, look and examine certain things. Is it reasonable to say that some things in the Bible are true and some things are false? That some things in the Bible are true and some are false? Yeah. Is that reasonable to say that? Yes, as I mentioned earlier about the whole thing, that there was the idea that was going around about people believing there was a tiny human being in the, in the semen. Uh, that is mentioned in scripture, but it's not being taught um, as, you know, doctrine or being a didactic teaching of scripture, but utilize. No, I'm not talking about theology. I'm talking about history. Right. Do you think that there's some, is it reasonable to say that some things that's reported as history in the Bible is true? And in the same token, some things are false. I'd say it again. Do you think that it's reasonable to say that some things as reported as history in the Bible, that okay. some things are true and yet some things may be false. Is that reasonable to say that? In terms of history, no. Why? Well, Why is that not reasonable to say that? Well, to me, it's based on just what I've seen and examining of the historical record and comparing it within uh, the Gospels as well as looking into uh, the stuff from the scholars themselves. Would you so say that about any other book in on this planet? Well, yeah, I mean, I'd say that there would be some things that would be said if, you know, we examined them. In other words, I'm asking, do you view the Bible as immune to, to any other historical document? Like you could have a historical document that's like even 99.9% .9 accurate. But, yep. you know, it's very reasonable to say, well, they could have got one fact wrong. But you're not willing to say that with the Bible? Well, I, even to me, I wouldn't even say that about, uh, I would say that, Thing, same thing I'm saying about the Bible concerning certain other documents. Uh, so, I mean, I haven't read, obviously, all the ancient documents out there, but I'm willing to say that there are probably some, while some may contain errors, there's also some uh, that probably don't contain any errors. But again, I am not someone who's gone out and read every single ancient work. Like, I haven't read um, the, uh, the Gallic Wars by julius caesar and so as a result i can't comment on if there's actually any but you don't have to read all of history to just have a common sense view that humans make mistakes right and humans can make mistakes but there's also times while having that idea that humans make mistakes um that just just because we make mistakes doesn't mean that everything we write upon uh will contain an error then that would mean that there is some error in our science books or our history True. books having in our class and i wouldn't say that true I, I agree with you that that doesn't necessarily mean that everything uh human rights is is false or true but but my, but my question was one of reasonableness like it wouldn't it be reasonable to say yeah the bible could have said something that claimed you know historically a historical claim that that just got wrong mm -hmm. i'm and i heard you say no you don't believe that right and i asked why mm-hmm 
And I believe it's because, number one, that the uh, Bible is in there. And secondly, that when I examine the Bible and then compare it to the historical uh, data, as well as looking into the scholars on the matter, um, and note, not just simply the ones that side with me, but even looking at the critical ones that have tried offering explanations to debunk uh, biblical inerrancy, as well as that the Bible, and say that the Bible does contain errors in certain things. Um, when I look at some of these things, I don't see um, any problems or errors um, historically with what the Bible says, and indeed find something that conforms with the historical data and the historical record. You don't see any errors. Like, I don't know how much longer you want me to talk. I can leave immediately if you want, because um, I know you maybe have other questions. But I, I would just point out that I've, I don't, you probably talked to Muslims as well, and you probably talked to Mormons. Yeah. I, I have. You I know have what? Books. The ones I've talked to, they don't see errors in their books either. Right. And that's the thing that, you know, they would say the same thing and then they're well entitled to that. And that's where that's up for us to have a discussion on that to point. But shouldn't we, sh given that, that we've seen this, we've seen yeah. people not see errors in their own holy books. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we as truth seekers lower our confidence that maybe we're wrong? Well, I mean, I think we can say that about certain things. Um, but in terms of what I'm talking about is I say, that's not I started with, I could be wrong as I started my journey. And then after going through it and looking at the various things and continuously being proven right and right and right and right again, I mean, I think my confidence started off low gets higher. Well, you know, as well as I do, Mormons say the same thing and Muslims say the same thing. They say, I right. dug, you know, I had doubts. I, I did the research, Doug. And and right. the more I delved into the Quran, the more I was convinced that this is truly the word of Allah. Like, right, I disagree the, with them. You disagree right. with them. But right. But the issues about the sources and actually going to the claims and such. So they'll say that. And they say that, too. Yeah, right. they'll do that, too. They'll to research. The, and I say, let's go to the Quran. Let's go to the sources. Let's go to the historical data. And let's do an examination of this. And, I mean, the only things that you mentioned were three things for the most part. And that is... Uh, uh, the issue of the sun, um, you know, being an in an eclipse for about three hours. And then there was the, the, the curtain. And I forget what you said. Oh, yeah. The third one you said was the what you would identify as zombies, even though I would disagree that that was. Uh, the word doesn't matter. Just people, dead people came out of their graves. Right. I would say dead people that are alive and not like decaying flesh and such, which would have like, been. Like there's. There's historians, Christian historians, who study this stuff for a living. They know way more than both of us combined. Right. Uh, and they don't believe this that this is a fact of history. This is, they don't believe these historical claims. They don't believe there were guards at the tomb in Matthew. Like, what are what are they missing? That like, do you believe there were guards at the tomb in Matthew? Yeah, I believe that there were guards at the tomb in Matthew. And just because a scholar says something doesn't automatically make it true, that would be an appeal to authority fallacy, which is something I've seen. I'm not saying what? that it's true or not. What I'm saying is right. that there's guys, Christian guys and girls, right. who have looked at the evidence and even touched the, the documents even, know way more than you do, and they yeah. come to a different conclusion. What are they missing that you are not? Well, they would also be differing and missing things that other scholars like Michael J. Kruger, Craig Blomberg, and various others have touched yeah, on. But what are they missing yeah. in all those people? What What do you think is going on? Well, I think the main thing that would occur for some of these is a uh, sort of starting presupposition that they have, as well as appealing to the modern, uh, popular form of liberal scholarship that occurs in the field today, where it's pretty much about getting a new claim in um, and starting with that and then trying to bring something new which would sell some sell some books as well as uh, get some talks that come in. Uh, so I think that's one thing that goes in. But the second thing that I also think happens is that some people are actually genuinely honest and in looking into these discussions and looking at these, but they don't fully go into it consistently to um, do things like, you know, harmonization like we do with uh, eyewitness accounts in, say, crime scenes and such like that, or uh, trying to examine you know, evidence from a critical and full laid out uh, understanding on certain terms that are used as well as the context that surrounds it and such. Um, that's why you have people that even Muslim scholars even didn't, that are doubtful about the existence of Muhammad, um, even though there is definitely a lot of evidence for his existence. But there are some people that try to put doubts on that even in Muslim schools. Um, 
and that's where we have to examine the sources themselves and it's the scholars they have their own ways of doing it and there's obviously a, a bias that they may have or preconceived notions or rather yeah, be, I, as soon as I, I almost my brain kind of turned off right after you said the word presupposition when you started your answer um and i agree with you i think that's the difference i um so any anyway, i'll let you go you turned off to that then if you agree there <laughs> Well, uh, I think that's the issue. I think there's um, there's a lot at stake, and so if um, if you're coming from the point of view that you know your starting point is that this is the word of God, then where do you go from there? It's like mm -hmm. you, you, like it, it 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 kind of hamstrings you from even questioning it. Well, then there, no, that's not, not necessarily because there are people who are critical scholars that start with that presupposition. Like I mentioned, Michael J. Kruger, Craig Blomberg, and several others that have especially the people in the uh, Evangelical Theological Society that publish uh, papers on this that are definitely taking in a lot of interest in comments and such, even people like that that believe that 2 Corinthians 4.4 refers to Yahweh and not the devil, as many people claim that the God of this world is in that verse. Um, so there's a lot of you know things that are, like, say, out of this world and such that people are going to claim and make these days. Um, but. Yeah, I agree. But the thing is, like I in life um, on matters that I'm not an expert in, when I hear the experts disagree violently on certain things, um, yeah. I think a good rule of thumb is to lower one's confidence in whether it's true or not. So well, like, as I said, I, I've done that before. Pardon me? As I said, I've done that before. No, no. I'm saying you should do it now and tomorrow and the next day, because as a seeker of truth, uh, you just don't say, oh, I'm done. I got the truth. I'm done. Because imagine a Mormon saying the same thing. Imagine an is a Muslim saying the same thing. No, I got the truth. I'm done. I don't have to look into it anymore. Can we say the How same thing about two plus two equals four? Uh, that is something. Now, that's a great example. If you ask what's two plus two to a Muslim, to a Hindu, to a Mormon, to a Jew, to a Christian, you notice they all get the same answer? That's something we can have high confidence in, right? But now if you ask about the things we're talking about in the New Testament to a Jew, an Orthodox Jew, a Muslim, a uh, Hindu, you're gonna get different answers. Yeah. And so, so I'm- What your confidence then about two plus two equals four then? Because what I just said, it's, it, I think it's axiomatic, but I think the, the broader point is that when you have different biases coming to the same conclusion, that's maybe a better reason to be more confident than when you have, oh, it seems like a certain branch of Christianity all believe that, and a certain branch of Mormonism all believe that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, and all the outsiders can see it, but the insiders can't, and vice versa. Okay. So, but but yeah. there are some people that would probably disagree with two plus two equaling four that are, you know, we would both agree probably be crazy, but there are people that would say it's, say, classical the answer they sometimes give would be five. Okay. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What are you more confident about? That two plus two equals four or that Jesus rose from the dead? I'd say that I'm equally confident in both of those things. You are? Yes. Honestly? Yes. There is no doubt in your in your mind at all. No. There used to be. What overcame that doubt for you? from looking at the historical records and the gospels that then of course we have those that predate the gospel before they were written in say the examples of the first Corinthians 15 passage. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You were doubting a doubting believer? Yeah, I was a bit of a doubter and doubting type of believer. Yeah. And then you looked at the historical record and then you became a convinced believer. Yes. Well, what made you a believer in the first place before you even looked at the documents? The whole thing was about mostly like at first a, a sort of uh, name tag Christianity or default Christianity where you just kind of have this phrase of when you grow up into, you're brought up into it at a young age and such. And so you don't, you just have that name tag, but you don't really question it. You just really believe that a God exists and such, but you don't really understand or even know much about the theology or even read a Bible. I never read a Bible until I was like 19 or eight or 20 years old. Um, so, okay. I, I hear what you're saying. Um, but as truth seekers, like if I've talked to personally to Muslims who have said, I was a Muslim, my parents were Muslim, and I really started to question it in my late teens, early 20s. 
And I did my research. And you know what, Doug? I came out convinced that Islam is true. Right. Now, now, what's going on in that Muslim, do you think? What's happening within that Muslim? Well, I can't say because I am not the Muslim. I don't have his mind or his abilities. What's your opinion? What's your guess? What's happening? What happened to that Muslim? Why is it that when they were a Muslim, but they had doubts, and then they started doing research and became convinced, what do you think was going on there? Mm -hmm. Well, my one we would be this uh, a, a deception that God gives him over to deception to believe in the false religion of Islam. Could could like we it doesn't even have to be deception. Couldn't it just be that they were seeking? answers for what they already believed yeah they were seeking answers and god decided to lead them towards the area where they would be deceived i don't know why you're jumping to deception right away we don't even have to go that far it's just it's well, human it's, it's human fault. nature to like if you're a republican it's human nature to view anything that democrats say on a negative bias if you're um democrat vice versa it's human nature to to kind of confirm our bias right it's and so i would say that what's happening to that muslim is it was confirmation bias right of and course, so like so my theological perspective because that's just who i am as a christian say that again you, what i said i'm going to approach this from a theological perspective as an apologist when you ask me the question because obviously i'm going to hold to what i believe just like you hold to uh, the notions that you have and what you affirm well, I, I hope, um, like the, I have, I'm dogmatic on very few things, very few things. Um, one of them is that the, the earth is spherical shape. Like that's how, and that when I let go of this pen, it will drop. That's the things I'm dogmatic about. And, and on a lot of other things, I'm totally open to the evidence, but I apportion my confidence to the level of evidence. And, but I don't see Muslims doing that. And I don't see Mormons doing that. And to be frank, I don't see you doing that, mm -hmm. but I, I really have to go. Okay. Um,